All right, hello everybody. Um, just going to do a quick little video of doing my crepe myrtle wands. Um, very basically, I'll start off with the raw wood. Please wear your safety devices when working sharp objects. Um, then I go over to a very rough, unsanded finish. These are some that I have sanded and finished. These are a couple that I have played around with, leaving the bark on as the handle and doing some painting. Now the reason why I'm doing these and doing this video is normally I make these wands and I give them away um, at, well let's just say a certain convention that I go to. And it's all for fun and it's a random act of kindness. So, but during the current situation, I know there's a lot of folks at home kind of bored, a lot of young people. So I thought I would make some and just give them out unfinished. They're sanded, smooth. Uh, the reason why I chose the crepe myrtle wood is it's very, very strong wood. Um, the nature of the wood, it's very, very fibrous, does not break very easily. And even in its rough shape, does not give splinters. Um, if I were to take that across my knee and break it, the ends would poof into fibers. Now, yeah, if I jabbed my hand a couple of times, I could hurt myself with it. So they're not perfect. They're not invulnerable. They don't have superpowers. They're just neat and fun to play with. Now, over here, I've got a big piece that I've sanded the end finish. Um, I'm going to try some different things to show the unique properties of this wood. This wood generally does not like traditional wood stains. I'm going to do it the right way this time and actually put on some gloves. This is a Minwax finish. The color is Gunstock, a very popular orangey type color. Now it will go on there, but it's not going to sink in very, very deep. So it looks great. But pretty much will wipe right off. It'll give a little bit of a tone. And if this had been regular wood, that would have sunk deep in there. It doesn't go just to the surface. Um, so when I first started messing with crepe myrtle, I learned that it doesn't like traditional stains. But with it being a dried out piece of wood, I had the idea of, well, if it's dry, what does it think about water? So, I tried watercolors, food coloring specifically. Now this is a couple of drops of red in water. Looks really kind of red and orangey there. Goes on kind of pink. Now I found that if I do this a couple of times, the color does get darker eventually. So being the very impatient person that I am, I decided to try going a little bit more direct. So I go with straight food coloring. That sinks in pretty good. Now, the neat, interesting thing about this wood is it's kind of like painting on a paper towel. It's going to bleed, so it's not like a fine canvas where your lines stay perfect. And that 
that's why I make mistakes. And that's also why I'm filming this without my wife around. So I try to figure out a way to get really straight lines. Toothpick. Let it sink into the wood a little bit. Then And I am not much of an artist, guys. I can make some fine lines. It still bleeds a little bit. Now the next portion, this is going to be, you and I are going to learn together. Because I've never tried all of these things and since I've been giving these things away, I wanted to see what it looked like. So this is a fine point permanent marker. It's going to be in gold. So we'll see how that works against the light colored wood. It looks pretty good. Now, I thought about what this would look like going across the watercolor since that's gold and that's blue yeah so so now this is for all you dark wizards out there let's try a black sharpie Works really good. I'll try the very fine lined Sharpie. Odds are this is going to work really good too. Still bleeds a little bit. And that is my rendition of a Jack Skeleton. Very, very poor artist that I am. Now I have to imagine that paint would go right on it because it is wood and you can paint wood. Of course my marker is a little dry. And that's gold. I don't know why I keep going for gold. Gold doesn't show up well against this blonde colored wood, but paint does work. A paint pen. So these are colored markers. Must be fine tip. These were liberated from my wife's scrapbooking supplies. So if you guys don't tell, I won't tell. So these work very good. the gel pens work. And these are the bullet tip. These are paint pens.
chances are that these are going to do the same thing. Sorry about that. Uh, these markers work, odds are those, and that paint pen worked. Uh, these are fabric markers. Hopefully they haven't dried out. work also. Now the trick with any of this when you're working with wood is I'm going to take this piece take it back out to the shop and 80 grit sandpaper I'm going to sand this away. Uh, right now this is sanded down to 220. The ones that I'm giving away to folks are sanded down to 220 um, except for this particular one. Um, I was doing experimentation with that one. That's going to the only doctor that I'm happy to see once a year. Um, I'd like to see him more, but he's a good friend. But um, that is working with Crate Myrtle, guys. Um, just a rough, little quick introductory to it. Um, hope everyone enjoys their wands. If I give you one, if you're doing this on your own, um, the trick is to let the wood dry. Everybody here in the south, they trim the crepe myrtle woods once or twice a year. I let it dry for at least six months or more. It's, uh, more if, I could, if it's cut when it's wet. If it's cut in the fall or in the winter when the sap's down, it should dry out quickly. And then I give it a rough shape and sand it smooth. Alright, thanks and have fun.